Wow, I'm always so excited to be here. Um, whoa, I'm standing over here and getting overwhelmed by the power and the presence of God that's in the house. I'm telling you, he loves his congregation so much. I can't, every time I come, y'all hear the same thing, but every time I come, the reality of who you are to him is so huge. And I receive a, a, a further uh, re reality in that. And so I'm, the Lord is going to have his way. And I want each of you just to carry the power and the presence of the impartation and what he's given you in your spirit, that it is resurrection power to bring you up out of wherever you have been. This wonderful testimony that came that said there was a failure, but God used that to pick her up out of that place and go far beyond what any she thought, but he knew, and it's only the beginning for her. It's only the beginning. And the seeds that were sown are being sown in all of these students that are being taught by this one that has allowed the resurrecting, resurrection power of the living God to move through her to affect lives will be eternal. And she'll not know it until the end of the age and we're there with him and people are running up and saying, oh, Melanie. You know, I, do you remember when I was in your class and na, na, na? And yeah, <laughs> but it's not for her glory, it's for his, you know. She'll give her crown to the one that was able to make it happen for her, the first resurrection, the first fruit, of the res resurrection power that took place on resurrection day. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you and I praise you for this glorious uh, opportunity for each of us to come before you to receive all that you have and in our hearts we open our hearts to celebrate who you are this day that there's an exchange an exchange tonight that we give our love to you that you've given to us father but oh we receive all that you have for us we honor and worship you Lord we forget all it, all of our own stuff and give our attention so completely to you that each one will not see me as the vessel, but they'll see you as the risen Lord and King. Be speaking to each one, not by my own ability, but by your ability. Let your will be done and your kingdom come tonight in each one, Father, in each this evening as you would have it to be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. You know, um, we had an awesome time last night, and um, I, I just want to pull from what the Lord had us do through the Passover from yesterday. It's really a continuation, and for those that weren't there, the Seder talks about the seven feasts of the Lord that the Lord um, instituted in, in Leviticus uh, 23. And from that uh, chapter in Leviticus, he talks about each of the seven feasts, and the first one being Passover. And it's about the story of the exodus of the uh, Jewish people, the Israelites, coming out of Egypt and being delivered from that captivity into the promised land. And as we consider that, um, uh, breaking away that exodus, we, in, in the Seder, each one that participates is to um, have their own um, exodus experience so that they see the great I am, but they also see as believers the deliverance of Jesus. And, and so in all of that we're going to talk to today is to realize that our sacrificial lamb that was foreshadowed or spoke about in the Old Testament has been fulfilled in Jesus. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law or what has been in the past, but to fulfill it. And so there's a fulfillment in you that only can happen that God has uniquely created you for a divine purpose. And those seven feasts of the Lord that talks about in Leviticus 
are uh, set apart times that he wanted to come and meet with each one to bring um, his um, kingdom into their heart, that intimacy and that place that he could share like he did with Adam and Eve, uh, what he intended, a a answer those questions that they had about life and creation and, and so forth. So um, tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about that. The Lord had given me, um, I just need a Kleenex. Um, I see one. Hang on. Excuse me, guys. Um, so um, as I was starting um, preparing for the Seder, each time I do a, a, a Seder, and I've been blessed, I'm, I don't say me, but the Lord speaks to me about how to put it together, and there's an order of service called the Haggadah. And as I'm preparing this Haggadah, which is the order of the service, and the focus that the Lord want, wanted to bring to the group last night, and to you, because it's going to be a spillover. Uh, we're going to just believe that you receive that impartation. You're not going to be left behind. When I intend to do something and I'm not able to for whatever the circumstances are, I lay a hold of God and said, Lord, you get it to me how I need to get it, regardless of the time or the season, because there's no time or distance in the spirit. And whatsoever we desire when we pray, believe that we receive and we have it. You know, so there's no deficit. There's no uh, uh, anything that, that you don't receive if you set your heart to receive it, okay? Right. And so in, in the preparation of this, um, you know, I had uh, in my heart a, a, a theme or a title about the direction I felt the Lord wanted us to go, and we're going to see how he flows through that. But it's um, taking off the grave clothes and putting on immortality, okay? But in, even in that, um, the, the Lord started speaking to me about this house, and I wanna read something that I, the Lord gave to me about LifePoint, and then we're gonna go back and really go back and address some of the things that Melanie uh, talked about as a reality for all of us through the end of the age. Um, and, and, and also our song that the resurrected power of Jesus excuse me, resurrected me, okay, and continues to resurrect me, each of us, uh, moment by moment, even to the, through eternity, there's resurrection power that we'll, we will come up into to know him more. I mean, it will be eternity, 100 million years from now. Right. He will still be saying, y'all, come on and look at this. And we'll go, ooh, ah, wow. You know, he is so magnificent beyond we could ever imagine. Amen. So, um, hallelujah. So th this came to me. I'm, I've shared it with the pastors, so it's not anything that's going to be shocking to them. And... Um, but I, I, I hope that you will uh, will take it and we'll just use it as the Lord would want to unfold it and how he wants to bring forth what he wants to say tonight. Um, this came to me on April 8th, uh, 2019, and I believe it was inspired by Holy Spirit. It wasn't anything I was thinking about. I'm typing, not even, even thinking about um, in this vein. It says, Iowa is my pleasure, and Life Point is my heart. The pulse of my desire for my body, that each person would be a life point, a place of life and a source of light pointing the way to the end of the age so that my children are standing in and functioning in the kingdom, in the sphere of influence, in the region, as, in this region as it is in heaven. Life point, my life point. Oh, you are caring much in the spirit for my glory and for my namesake. You carry it well. As, and as you continue to mature as a vital part of my body, your portion of the kingdom will grow and mature and bear much fruit. 
As we talked about the Feast of First Fruit, we see, your, see yourselves in that place of being a type of first fruit of many who are yet to come and to this place, fitly joined to the body, life point. Pray for those that are, in, in, that are connected to you so that there is a seamless flow from this well to many others. There are wells of salvation in my body, and you are one of them. Just as there are main organs of a human body that causes other parts to function, life point, as, as is indicative of your name, is just like that. I am bringing other parts or joints that will supply that will be fitly joined to life point to facilitate advancing the kingdom of heaven from your area, your Jerusalem, to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Hallelujah, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, every time I think about this, I'm overwhelmed by the power and the presence of God. It wasn't me, but it's for you, and I want you to grab hold of that. And I can't even say that Pastor's heart to share, allow uh, Melanie to share tonight, is for you to hook into that uh, possibility, not the impossibility. And one of the things that we talked about yesterday was that in Genesis, and I just want to read it and give you a, sort of a perspective that started out in Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now in that, there is no confusion. There is, it, God created a perfect world, but when the fall of Lucifer came, there, confusion came. But that's a different story. I don't want to go stay there. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day and the day night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. There's an evening and a morning, and one of the things that, you know, as I'm studying, I hadn't really heard, thought of is that in the world, we move from darkness or light to darkness. We start in the light in the world and it progresses down to darkness. But in God, as is evident in this scripture, he moves from darkness to light. In other words, our, our future is getting brighter and brighter as we go along. We don't go from darkness, uh, light to darkness. We go from darkness to light, strength to strength. Glory to glory. And so, in, um, I keep going back to Melanie's uh, testimony. I'm telling you, it it's just was perfect. You know, where there was a failure, the dark, darkness, she has accelerated and abounded past the darkness into light. She is accelerate, excelling. And so everything that we do, you know, when we talk about... Uh, 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 where we are and you know even in our our uh, physical or our spiritual uh, life we turn around from our dark darkest days in the world and our future is bright in him and so there is no deficit there is no darkness when we can uh, change our mind and our thinking that we are delivered from darkness into into light and that our 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 day begins in the evening, and the scripture says uh, uh, blah, 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 it, that we have sadness for a day that's not exactly right, but there's joy in the morning. There is excitement, there's hope, there's always hope um, that we can lend to. Um, <clears throat> One of the things in, in this word that came, uh, 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 it talks about first fruits, and in the uh, Levitical story of the, the Feast of the Lord, the third feast of the Lord, let me just back up. The first day is Passover, which, you know, they were to put the blood on the doorposts of the, of the uh, houses of the Israelites, and the death angel would pass over from the 10th plague. Okay, everybody got me? Okay, okay so then uh, 
the second day of Passover, which all is all inclusive in seven days. The first day is Passover from the, the blood being p placed on the doorpost. The second day is unleavened bread, and that r talks about uh, the grave, where Jesus went into the grave on, on the uh, uh, second day of the Passover week. The third day of the Passover week is first fruits, and so that talks about the resurrection. It on the third day, the children of Israel was going through the Red Sea, and it was they went in and out. They were resurrected on the other side into safety, okay? Just like Jesus went into the grave and was resurrected on the third day. And so he's talking to you about this place being... Um, uh, a type of first fruits, that there are things that will come into fr from the darkness but be resurrected out of here in a way that will give glory and honor to him and allow uh, that resurrection power to, to um, permeate the, the, re the region uh, and things that are going on here. Okay, um, according to John, um, let me go back to John. I, I've spent a lot of time in John, and, and John, you know, one of the things about John, the book of John, is that John spent a lot of time with, with the Lord, and he himself called himself the, the disciple that Jesus loved. And so when you read John, the book of John, there's such insight and intimacy a knowledge that he only gained from being in that secret place with God, being the one that was so close and intimate. He had the, the 12 disciples. He had the three, Peter, James, and John. But John was the one that leaned on his breast, was the closest, and was, was always there. And even Jesus gave his mother to John, you know, to take care of as he was uh, being uh, crucified on the cross. It says in, in um, John 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life that uh, was the light of men. And skipping down to 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So in the word, you know, is the foundation for everything that we, we are, who we are. We were made by the word. We are the word. We are made one with him. There is no deficit. And when we think about every name that uh, Jesus is called, the Father or the, the um, I am the Father or the Holy Spirit, because we are one with Elohim, all three of them, we can take on those attributes, not in of ourselves, but because he said, and that prayer that came in John 17, that um, Jesus prayed for us. You know, we're, I'm not going to spend time right now, but I'm going to go back to there. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But, um, you know, in that having our relationship with God, regardless of where we came from out of the world, the, the, the grave clothes that we need to shed when, as we're coming out of this, this world, our uh, inferiority, not knowing who we are in Christ Jesus, that we're not in understanding our, our authority and our ability in him. Uh, pride, anything that is not of God and godliness separates us from the, the power that he called us to uh, stand in. We have it. There, there's, it doesn't just, when we said yes, Everything was infilled with us. We allow that uh, coming out, so to speak, uh, to, to manifest when we um, allow him to have full reign and we believe the word. We stand in the power of the word. So the grave clothes, the things that are holding us back are, are our own uh, misunderstanding. Everything that he's created for us and we yield to who he is in us allows the, the power of, uh, of the strength of his presence to reign 
uh, in and around and through us. One of the exciting things about this day and this hour is that we are transitioning from the church age. We're into a, a new dispensation. We're moving out down into the, the time of the, the millennial reign, the kingdom age. And um, uh, Jesus had the disciples pray. They said, how should we pray? And he taught them to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come and your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And so who we are now, as we are transitioning from uh, this church age into the kingdom age, we're moving from faith into dominion. Not that faith is uh, passed away, but in dominion you are. I am. I am, you know, and so he wants you to see yourself as I am. I'm able. I'm the ability that God created us to to walk in and not see the deficit. That's history. You know, there's nothing left behind that we need. Our future or or, or who we are or is uh, now in the future. You know, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. It's now. The Hebrew said, you know, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen are coming to light now in this kingdom age. We're even seeing with quantum physics the ability, um, the things that uh, uh, in quantum physics that do things that we don't understand, but when we anticipate the something happened. There's things in the atmosphere God created to make things happen. I don't know if you guys are all following me, but I'm telling you the changes in, in how God is working with us, it's, it's in the word and the, un, the mysteries are being unveiled, uh, that Daniel, uh, uh, closed up in, in the books, and he said, the Lord told him to close it up, but there are going to be understandings about things uh, concerning the kingdom, concerning the word, uh, that we thought was one way, and he's going to show us a different way, and it's not that the old was gone, or, or we did it wrong, but it's like little children when we start learning how to walk and uh, maneuvering our way through this world is we have a limited understanding and the more we uh, uh, live our, our life and we get closer to him, he's gonna reveal more things. And that was one of the hardest things for the Lord in the garden is that Adam and Eve um, believed the lie of the enemy and you know disrupted all of the plan for man in the first way, but God had a plan to bring all of it into the reality. But what, you know, they experienced in the garden is where God wants us to come back to. That the reality of the first principle, the reality of, of Adam and Eve walking in the cool of the day with God. You know, and you can do that right now. It's not like a future thing. It's like now. Having conversations with him, talking to him just like Melanie did about her her school, and he's teaching her. You know, if um, Adam and Eve or Eve had not considered the enemy, God would have told them about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, it wasn't like he was trying to hold out, you know, but he would have. Uh, shared with them exactly what he wanted them to know in the appropriate time frame. Just like children driving, they can't get it all about driving. They have a little scooter car and they know that it rolls, but eventually they'll understand speed and, you know, the dynamics of the car's function. Um, okay, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, um, Okay, let's look at um, John 11. Uh, it's the story of Lazarus. Okay. Uh, 
Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, in Bethany, the town of Mary, and her, uh, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with uh, the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister set uh, upon him, saying, Lord, behold, by whom thou lovest is sick. And Jesus heard um, that, and he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for, glo for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified by. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and, uh, and Lazarus. And when he had heard thereof that he, um, he was sick, he bowed with them two days still in the same place where he was. In other, other chapters, you know, the uh, books, he, he was doing assignments on the way. He took his time to get there. Let us go into Judea again. And Jesus, um, the disciples um, uh, were talking to him. I'm just going to start on, on some of the red uh, letters. Are they not 12 hours in a day? And if any man walk in the day, he stumbles, not because of he sees the light of the world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. These things said, uh, these things said he, and after he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus uh, sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. How about Jesus spoke, spake uh, of his death, but this thought he had uh, spoken of taking a, a rest and sleep. And then said Jesus unto him, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the in intent ye have believed. Nevertheless, let us go and unto him. You know, there's times when we know things, um, like with our children, and we can't tell them. They just got to see it for, for themselves. And so he was going on to um, the tomb uh, to raise uh, Lazarus because they needed to see it. Um, then Martha and Jesus, uh, as he's coming, then Martha, as soon as she heard of Jesus was coming, went and, and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother would not be dead. But I know that even now, whatsoever you, you will ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said in, unto her, thy brother shall arise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall be he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Now, you know, we've looked at this, this um, scripture and we always think, about, we don't consider the, the word that it says without putting our own twist in it. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so whoever liveth and believes in me, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believe thou this. And so we think about immortality and, and the death being, um, you know, after a long sickness, after a long time of demise or of darkness, and that ends our life. But God wants us to see that from the beginning, even though there's darkness now, that that's the lowest point that we should always look for the light and the resurrection power to come. Let's um, turn over to the next page. And um, hang on just a minute. <clears throat> Jesus therefore again, grow, um, let me back up a bit. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping uh, over uh, Lazarus, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit because he was troubled. He understood that they didn't believe. 
and said, Where have you laid him? And he said unto the Lord, Come and see. Jesus wept and said that the, Jew, said the Jews, Behold, he loved him because they saw him weeping. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a, a cave and a stone which lay, open, um, lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone, Martha, and, and the sister of him that was dead. Said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And for he hath been dead for four days. Now, people read this scripture and they think, well, four days, you know, that, that, that's way too long to get resurrected from the dead. <laughs> but we're coming to a time and an age that, you know, Jesus said we're going to do the things that he did and even greater. And what would greater be than four days being raised from the dead? How about being burned up and the ashes are scattered and we call resurrection power be by the power of the, the Holy Spirit and those parts come back together and resurrection life be. He said there's no impossibilities in him. Amen. Consider that. Selah. Amen. You know. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said unto her, said I not uh, unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou wouldst see the glory of God. Amen. And then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus filled up his, eye, his eyes and uh, lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that thou hearest me. And I know that you, you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, and, and I said it, that they may believe that thou hast seen, see, sent to me. And when he, let me stop there for a minute. You know, I don't know how many of you have prayed for someone that's um, for healing and, and so forth, and those that are not always in, from the faith camp, I'll, I'll just say, or believing in uh, resurrection power, the gifts of the Spirit, and so forth. And, you know, you're questioned about how you prayed because it wasn't like them. You know, Jesus had this one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, and he could have said get up, you know, and we're taught to pray in the, in the, to the Father in the Jesus' name. But I know Oral Roberts has, uh, uh, many of the men and women that had worked with Oral Roberts, you know, how he prayed was not always the same, but he knew his position and his authority, and he used it to, and to say, like Jesus, get up, you know. And so there's a place that we can come to that we don't have to go through the formal uh, Father in the name of Jesus because the Father already knows who we are and we know who our authority in, is and that God is the power that gives us the ability to lift or do anything that we can say get up just like Jesus did and we don't have to uh, be caught in the religious tradition. If, if that makes sense? Okay, amen. And so then thus spoken, he cried out and said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he, was and, bleh, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about a napkin, and Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. So Jesus gave that commandment for uh, them to loose him. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and, and had seen the things that Jesus had did believed on him. Of course, some of them didn't believe. The thing that when Jesus gave the command, even the command, there, I'm sure there were other Lazarus that could have been in the grave. And why did not them all not rise up and be attention? And maybe they would have. But he spoke to that one to, to come up. And just like our, our words are powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword separating the joint and the marrow, the soul and the spirit, you know, the same with uh, uh, our words when we speak with the authority and we others around may not understand how we speak the word that the spirit has given to us, but we have to hear 
the Spirit and say what the Spirit says, do what he, we see him do in, uh, as Jesus talks about the Father, and, and, and go from there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So um, let's go to... Uh, In John 14, six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And that henceforth you know him and you have seen him. And so, you know, we think about the way. He's the way. He's the truth and he's the life. And when we consider all that he's called us to be, you know, the, the narrow road, broad to, is destruction, is the destruction, the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way. And when we consider that we're on the walk of the way and the things that he's called us to do as we are walking closer to him, it's going to fall. We're going to have things that fall by the wayside. Those are the, the weights. Those are the part of the grave clothes that need to come out off so that we can walk in the fullness of the, the uh, position that he's called us to walk in. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In John 10... Let's back up to John 8. In John 8, 31, he's talking to um, the leaders, uh, Jewish leaders, which um, then he said, Jesus said to those Jews which believed in him, if ye continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. And so there's a truth and a reality that we must come up to, and it's all based in the word. Hallelujah. And who, yeah, okay. Let's um, go over to um, 831, 32, and then 51. And verily I say unto you, if a man keeps my sayings, he shall never see death. And so again, that talks about and following the word and the word made flesh that dwelt among us when he died. He went to prepare a place for us and he wants us to come and to live with him. But there's scripture that, that um, he wants us to see that there is a place here that we can spend all the time that we need to fulfill all that he has called us to, f to accomplish. Um, you know, many people say, oh, the, we can only live se 70 or 80 years. Uh, but that 70 or 80 years that was talked about in the Old Covenant was of those that were in the desert and they sinned and they were not going to make it out of the, into the promised land and they would have lived 70 to 80 years. But the, Genesis, it says that we can live to be 120. And some of you may not die. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm holding out to 120. And I'm saying I won't die. I'm, I'm going to, in divine health, the scripture in Psalms 103 that says, you know, I, let my youth be renewed like the eagle. And however renewed it needs to be for me to continue to do what I need to do. And the Lord put that in there. And he may be talking to some of you about long life. Beyond what your parents were 
lived or others that are around and press into God for the, the over and abundant. He said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. What does that mean? I mean, for me, it means I'm going to hang out till uh, either he comes to get me first or I'm a, and you know, or just walk like Enoch from here to there, you know. I'm, I'm telling you, and we, I think we have to start talking about those types of things to give people the possibility that there, there's no impossibility. You know, that when God talked about, um, at, or set Adam and Eve in motion in the garden and he created them, he created them just like himself. You know, he gave them the, the power and dominion and Romans 8 talks about uh, all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to come up into that place to do what needs to be done for the kingdom to come back and be transitioned back into the hands of those that know what and how to do like Adam, you know, and whatever that looks like. I don't know. I'm telling you, I've been, the Lord has been having me uh, tap into people that have are into that place. I mean, that they are lo living long, that they are doing exploits like you can't imagine that they're doing. And, you know, God is bring, raising up this generation, these young kids that are being born now with a, a mindset for technology. That didn't happen in my generation. You know, with, that we had uh, uh, understanding at two and three years old how to do computers you know, or work a cell phone. But God is preparing each generation to fulfill what needs to be done. And I'm telling you, as you pray over your children, ask the Lord how to prepare them in this technological world. Yes, this is, this is it, but there's a society, uh, our society dictates uh, different things for our, our kids than in my generation. And he doesn't want any of us to be left behind, you know? And I, I think this Melanie, I keep going back to her and every other one that has a, an ability to speak into the lives of children, you know, that they don't limit their uh, ability, that there's always impossibility. And my son growing up, and even after he was in college, he, he's an like electronics engineer. He worked um, for FAA and, and um, uh, working the control panels, he did all the computer stuff for them. But, um, and so he would call and say, Mom, uh, pray for me. And I would pray that you have the mind of Christ. There is no lack or deficit in you. And every ability that you need, God has already given it to you. And I was shocked at the things that he was doing when he was telling me the classes that he was taking. He took calculus one and two, physics and something else in one semester, in a short semester, the quarter semesters, you know, where the times are compacted. I'm going, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. No impossibilities. <laughs> you know, so um, when we think about those things, I, 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 let me just think of something else that, to tell you that's just like, there's a guy... Um, he's 60 in his late 60s, almost 70. He is running uh, a marathon a month. And he's on, on top of that, then he's running like a 50 mile, like a, an extra, I forget what they call them, but they, instead of 26.2 miles, it's 51 miles. He's 60 some odd years old. And talk about the experiences in God. You know, I started listening. I'll tell you his name. His name is David Hogan. And, and back in the 90s, I started listening to this guy. I got some uh, CDs from um, a bookstore at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And he had ministered at Brownsville Revival. And the name of the tape series was Faith to Raise the Dead. I'm telling you, my son and I, we listened to those tapes over and over and over and over again. But one of the testimonies was about this young uh, girl. They were out in the jungles of Mexico. That's where his mission is located. And now he's, of course, going on around the world. But um, they were having an open-air crusade, and um, the rebels were driving by and shooting. And this little girl had her brains blown out, landed on a rock. He picked her up 
laid her on her, his shoulder and prayed for her, this little girl came back to life in her right mind. Her brains are still on the rock like nothing else ever happened. I mean, you know, and that's not what somebody else can do. That's what you can do. You say, I'm going to do that, and you do that, you know. You do that. And one, uh, one of the things back, I don't, I don't, this is not even where I was going to go, but praise God. Um, I, I'm working at, in my office in, um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and um, I had to drive an hour and a half to pick up my son from his father and, and come back, and it was winter time. And as I'm working in my office, um, I hear the Lord saying to my spirit, go get your sleeping bag. I had a Jeep, and in the winter, I usually carried my or sleeping bags just in case, you know, something came up. And, and so I went home and got the sleeping bags, both of our sleeping bags, and, and went and picked him up. And on the way home, there was uh, an accident. There was a, a little... Uh, sports car that came across the center median of the turnpike and was hit by a semi truck. And so um, I was the second vehicle behind the semi truck. And, and when I stopped, of course, I ran over to the car because I, I went over to the car and this young man had been thrown out of the, the car and his legs were up behind him in a real awkward way. Um, there was no breathing, and it was real, I, I could just say that there was some dark, shadowy stuff around. And then uh, the, there was another passenger that had been knocked out in the median, and he was up walking around. He was in shock, but he was walking around. As the traffic backed up, there was a, an ambulance that backed up in the, in the, in the, on the highway. The ambulance driver came, and, and she checked him. She, they brought no equipment, no nothing. And we stood there and prayed over him, but no one brought uh, emergency stuff t to help this boy. And so I'm praying. I'm, I'm on my knees, and I get behind him, and I, I'm praying, and I hear the Lord say, go get your sleeping bag. So I get up and run, get the sleeping bag, and throw it over this young man. And... Um, and then I, I keep praying, you know, and I hear that they're going to life light him and the other little boy, they're taken to the local hospital. Long story short, um, as the Lord had me go back, this boy was not living. And so they picked him up and life lighted him. We took um, the, the other boy to the other hospital close, like a next exit. And my son wanted to go... Um, witness to this young boy, and so we did, and led him to the Lord, and has, then we went to Tulsa and to the emergency hospital that they were taking him to, and they wouldn't give us any information, so we went back the next day, and his parents were there, and they kept saying, are you the one that uh, was there when he had the accident? Well, when I walk in the room, this young boy is sitting up with, with his clothes on, his boots are on, um, the parents said that um, the only thing hitting, uh, hurting was his back when he put his boots on and that the other boy had talked him into running away, you know, and, and so they were on their way home. But anyway, so, you know, I, I think about that. And, you know, the, the long story short is, is that this young man was raised from the dead and my son was a part of it. And I heard him say... You know what the Lord say, go what to go do. And if I hadn't, that he may have suffered hypothermia, waiting for the ambulance to come because they thought he was not alive. It was gone. He was, you know. And it was probably close to an hour before a life flight came. It wasn't like a quick thing. And you would th think the emergency people would have come and at least gave him oxygen or something, you know. Well, I was praying, and all of a sudden, you know, he's going. <sighs> and he pulls his leg out from under him a little bit, slightly. But, you know, he's now breathing heavily, you know, but air is coming in and out of, uh, of his body. So I, I say that to say, hear and do, and there's, you know, you think it's all that woo-woo or something big is going to happen, you know, to... 
But it's the ordinary things that you're in the right place at the right time, obeying what God has called you to accomplish. And really, when we look at the, the, what the scripture says in Mark and the Great Commission, the, the, we think about the laying hands on the sick and watching them recover, the raising the dead. Um, you know, all of that is uh, the extraordinary works. That's the milk of the word. It's the big, when you first say yes to Jesus, that's what you go do. There was a young guy in um, Mozambique that um, he was uh, the son of a witch doctors, and he, um, he one night he heard the Lord a voice say, "Run!" So he gets up and runs, and not knowing his parents are asleep, and he gets to, goes to the next village, and he. Uh, talks to his, uh, gets his little friend, and they take off, and they end up running into missionaries that led him to the Lord. And immediately, this young man and his friend, they start going to all of the vill villages and setting up uh, churches because they're leading people to the Lord just on what they knew from the salvation message. You know, they're, they're, they're hearing the word. What they know, they're going out, and they're uh, uh, telling other people about Jesus whom they, they just got introduced to. Don't know so much about it, but, you know, they're running. Well, in the process of this young man going out to uh, plant churches, he learned 17 different tribal languages as he's going to set up these churches or witnessing. His, he gets married, and his wife picks up 12 uh, tribal languages on the way. So, again, when you say yes... The, the, the ability for you to do all that God has called you to do is amazing. This, I, there's another woman that I, that I, um, I, I heard about that she, uh, the Lord told her to go into a, a satanic nightclub and witness. And she was on her way home at midnight and had to pass this, she's a businesswoman, pass this a nightclub, and so she went in, and she, of course, argued with the Lord, knowing if she goes in, it's um, and it's not God, you know, she's going to be hurt or dead or something. So she goes up, and and they're all making comments to her, not very nice, and you know, can imagine. And they were, you know, had tattoos and paint and all that. And she hears the Lord tells tell her to go inside, and she does. And so when she walks inside and she's looking around, all she could see is death and destruction, murder, all the vile things that you can imagine. And she hears the Lord uh, prompt her to go down to the, the center of the room, close to the stage, and she, she goes there. And so as she's going there to the, the center, she feels in her spirit, uh, she hears a, a groaning. She gets kind of a vision. And she hears this groaning, and it reminds her of seeing a killer whale mother, killer whale being separated from her baby, and the noise that this killer whale mama was making to uh, bring this baby back, to her, call it back to her. And so th the killer whale would make the sound, and the baby would hear it and come back. But then the baby got sick, and they separated, the scientists separated the mom and the, and so this sound was going out, and she said, I heard all of creation groaning, and the only thing she could um, liken it to was this mama whale desperate for this baby to come back. All of creation she heard groaning was the sin and the destruction that was in that room because of the sin of man, or you know, the f sin taking over. And so as she's standing there, she's hearing the, the Lord to tell her to sound out. She didn't know what that meant. And so she was like frustrated. She didn't understand what it meant. And so she turned around and walked out. And then she beat herself up thinking that um, she had missed God. And of course the devil is on her, you know, trying to make her feel like she missed uh, her appointment or her assignment. Two years later, she didn't even tell her husband that she had been in this satanic nightclub. She's ministering, and then there's this uh, woman that comes to uh, talk to her, and she was one of the women in this satanic nightclub. She was the high priestess, actually, when she went down to the center that was on the stage, and this woman says, you know, I, with everything within me, I wanted to 
uh, rip your head off and drink your blood. And she says, I'm glad you didn't do that. <laughs> so anyway, so as this woman is talking, she said, when uh, I saw you, you disappeared. She had physically stopped seeing this woman in the natural. And then you reappeared, and then you left. And when she left, there was an explosion of light. Um, and the priestess, high priestess, saw this light, and she was blinded. She told her, her fellow workers what had happened. They helped get her home, and she fell on her knees and gave her life to the Lord right then. But the woman did not know that she had, uh, there was anything that happened that night. She was beating herself up thinking that she had failed. And so my point to you is to be obedient to the Lord and to follow what he's called you to do. It may not make sense. He may say go left and you usually go right, but whatever you're doing going right is for his purpose. And one day maybe that he'll show it to you or what the reality of your obedience was when you went right instead of left. Because uh, as you go, he goes. And as you go, he goes. The, the one that dwells in you and he changes things. He changes the atmosphere where you go. And so, again, you know, taking off the grave clothes is being obedient uh, to the Lord, that there's no weight of the world or anything that would keep us from functioning and facilitating what the kingdom of heaven is saying to us uh, every day, every moment. And we might, may not ever understand the fullness of all of it, but I know that I know he is faithful and he'll never let you go and step into a place that he hasn't already provided a way of escape or an understanding that's going to facilitate someone's salvation, someone's deliverance that he allowed you to do and your obedience created that even though you may not see what happened. You know, and as we step into that place of obedience, you, you know, there are, uh, are, are things that the word tells us that we can have, that he tells us that we can do, um, that we have uh, unlimited possibilities um, in the word. And because of those unlimited possibilities, you know, we strive in those intimate times with him to find out what those 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 things are what is it that he's really called us to do when we read the word and to say that he is the way the truth and the life and that knowing that we are made one with him what does that mean for us you know that he's come to give us life and life more abundantly what does that mean for us john 17 let's read that i love this scripture i love john 17 and that helps me even in and holding on to the word about my health, it's when I get a symptom. I, I go back and say, devil, I am one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and there's no room for deficit. You know, you have no place in me. You know, get out of here. You know. I want you, let's read this, and just, um, I'm going to take time, and, and I'm going to read the whole thing, because it, he prays for the different ones that are close to him, those that are those, it, it, we'll see it as we go along. Um, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son that your son also may be glorified. As you have given me, uh, given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom they have sent. I have glorified you on, on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me. And now, O oh Father, glorify you me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested thy name in the, in the men, when you have, that you have given to me out of the world. Thine that you were, and, and you have given them to me, and they have kept my word, his disciples. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given to me are of, of you. For I have given unto them the words which you have given to me, 
and they have received them and have known surely that I came out of you and that you have believed that and that they have believed that you did in me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for the, them that you have given to me, that they are mine. And all mine are thine, or yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I just love that. You know, all of it's, it's so good. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your own name those which you have given to me, that they may be one as we are one. While I, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in, in your name. Those that you have given to me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my, my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them the word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the, from the evil. They are, not the, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sacrifice myself that they also might be sanctified through the word. Neither pray I for those alone, but for them also, whom shall believe not on me through their, their word, that they, will, they, that, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you have given to me I give to them, but they, that they might be one even as we are one, I in them and them in me, and that they may be made perfect in me, and that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that also you whom you have given me be with me where I am, they may be, behold my glory, and that you have given me, for you lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known you, and have have known that you have sent me and I have declared unto them your name and you will declare it that the love wherein with hath loved me may be in them and I in them I don't usually read this translation <laughs> it's an easier one but anyway here we go I usually do the King James or something that's a little bit easier, but this was the Bible I grabbed when I came. But John 17, you know, the, the, the place that we come to in him is if we have a revelation of how much he lo loves us, how much he loves us, how much he loves us, then there's no impossibility set before us, you know, it's a matter of recognizing that the love that he uh, had for us, he sent Jesus, and Jesus loved him enough to go to the cross for us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray for a minute. Father, I just thank you, and I'm just going to 
spend this moment in the in tongues to see direction where you want to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hayo Oshiti. Y'all pray in the spirit just real quick and and um Ayo Koshetia Sanasa Atoko Oshetia Salama Ata. Miyatana asokoshe ataza la atone etianano uti. Mayahoyi ayo koshete esepo uti na shene iti masala ati. Marakashte etianana ashobo uti na satiti asokoshe amana ata. Miyayaso maso 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 maso. Shena asole esheti asala kazeti asoloko. Kiana solo usheteni asala kasala kasiti asoko. Masala asule e kiana atoto usheti asanisi aso. Marakashteri asakosheli isti ana ata ata. Miyatara astoda usheti asalaka. Ba ata asolo uti asalana atata asolopo ushete miya ya hata mikisi akushele asapoti. Mayatara miya yohoti asalini asokushele ete. Mata osheti asalaka sheti asalaka ashtapokoku. The power of my resurrection rests upon each one of you. The power of my resurrection is in you. The power of my resurrection is as close as your breath. Your breath is resurrection power because it is me. It is the air you breathe wherever you go. Resurrection power is in you. Don't look out, look in. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit and the creator of the universe lives in you. The fullness of the universe is in you. The fullness of the universe is in you. The fullness of the universe is in you. There is nothing outside of the place in you that I reside. Consider that place as your secret place, not outside, as the world might think, but it's inside. It's inside, spending that time to meditate looking in to find the door that will give you access to every place in me that you need to go. Consider what you've learned or heard in the past that you look up, look in. There is a looking up. There is that place in, uh, because I'm wherever I, you are and outside of where you are, I am. But the, the intimate place that I have called you to be is in me, in you. We are one. We are one. The fa Father, Son, and Spirit. And the place that I've called you to be is in me. In me, one. And I'll show you how as you s decide to spend quality time with me to make an appointment with me, just as this, this weekend or yesterday, our, our time together uh, focused on the set appoint time, the set appoint, uh, appointment times, the set aside times are the times that I'm calling each of us to, each of us to, each of us to. I want to meet with you. 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 Praise the Lord. He's talking to me too. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just the vessel because I, I strive to, to be in that place, to hear him clearly and to, to have an experience in him to help draw me up into that place to clean and clear myself of anything of the world so he can use me as... Um, a manifested daughter, a son of, of God. You know, I, I want all that he went to the cross for. I don't want to leave anything undone, unaccomplished, because he paid a huge price for us, each of us. 
He created each of us for a destiny. He created each of us for a purpose. And I want each of us to fulfill that, that purpose and that destiny. In the name of Jesus, I bind your destiny to you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. Be your testimony. And love not your life till the death because he gave his. And until you can give yours in the same manner without considering your own way, you'll not be in that place with him. You'll not be in that place he wants you to be. We can't consider ourselves. We consider him only. And he'll give us the grace and the ability to do what we need to do to be that one that he wants us to be, that we'll live and move and have our being truly in him. Consider Sila. What that means for each of you, and each of you have your own place to come to, to make that a reality. You can't look around at what pastors are doing or what your neighbor is doing. It's a personal matter. You can't consider what your family is, would think about you. You can't consider what the boss is thinking about you. It's about you and God alone. It's about you and him getting together and finding out what that intimate place is about for you. And what my intimate place might be may not be your intimate place. Or how you get into that place with him may not look like the same thing. But for you and him, he's desiring more than anything for each of us to come, to be, and to find that, uh, that getaway place. In the Old Testament, he had Moses build what he called the tent of meetings place for him to get outside of the camp, out of the place that's familiar, and spend dedicated time, quality time with him. Find that tent of meeting place with God. Find that tent of meeting place that takes you out of the familiar and brings you into that intimate uh, seclusion with only him. You know, it, his name is a high tower, and we run into him, and we are safe. It's that strong place, that secret place. In his name, we run into. There are, we, there are many ways that we can access him. But we find that place that he wants us at each time we, we have an appointment. How we're to enter. Do we enter in through the name? Do we enter in through the Holy of Holies in that place in the spirit that we come to and worship? He's faithful. He's called this a life point, and he wants you to be a life point. This can't be life point without you having your place. And I know your pastors are, that's their heart, is to have a place that God can dwell and have his, his way, that his kingdom comes and resides here always. Not for a, an event or an occasion, but always, that it, this is a, a habitation a place that he dwells, that, that he never departs. And unless each of us bring uh, that place to him in this place, there'll be a little bit of a deficit. And we're only as strong as our weakest link. And we're not to leave anyone behind when they left Egypt. It says there, that there were no, not one feeble one among us. We are to help each other. Yes. Ephesians that we're, you know, it talks about in Ephesians 6 in, in the message translation that we would not uh, leave anyone behind. We grab hold of them in the spirit and carry them. Even though they may not understand what's happening, you see by the spirit he'll help you pray and to grab hold of that one that he shows you to grab hold of. So grab hold of each other by the Spirit. You're one. He's 
fitly joined you together as one. He's fitly joined you together for purpose. And you will run like the wind by the Spirit to accomplish many, many things that you did not have a clue that God was calling you to. But just say yes. Just say yes. And let him fill that yes with all the possibilities that he he is and he expects for you to enjoy. In Psalms um, 19, I was just going to read the last verse, but I I think I'll. Let's start in 7. Psalms 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than, the, than gold, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his error? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumption, presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be in, in, in innocent from the great tran- transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, a lot of people think it's just the words that we speak that pull us out of the place that we need to be. But don't allow our thoughts to, to be in outside of this word as well. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Don't let my words be stout against the Lord or my thoughts when I doubt that he is able to pull or do anything for me. You know, don't let your words be stout against him. When uh, we don't consider that he can raise us up off of a sickbed or a friend or find a new job or our family be restored. Let let our, our words not be stout against him in any way. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to, hallelujah. If I continue, you could, if you continue in my word, are ye not my disciples? And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for the truth. 
that passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds stayed on you. Father, we'll not look to the left or the right, but it's the word that we'll consider only. The word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we ask for the wisdom and revelation of him who is the word. The revelation of Jesus so that we can rise up to that place that our eyes would be illumined to the riches of the glory of his inheritance in us. Father, I thank you that there is no deficit whatsoever as we come up into a new reality of Jesus in us, being one with the Father, Son, and the Spirit, that we come up higher in considering who you are and who you've created us to be. Oh, Father, I thank you for the deficit that has been removed and been thrown into the pit of hell. There, there is no deficit in you. The resurrection power is ever working, ever working in every moment of our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I just praise you for all that you intend for each one of us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for this evening. I thank you, Lord, for the, the impartation and the impact of your, your word and your will and your way. It may seem a bit disjointed, but, Father, I know that you have a plan and a purpose for each one and that each one will succeed. I just decree it. They'll succeed in everything that you've called them to accomplish. By the blood of the Lamb, Father, you said we are testimony in you. We've overcome the enemy by that blood and the word of our testimony. And we'll love not our life to the end. We'll always give and we always win. You always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You always cause us to triumph. We are peace warriors. We are those that will run with you and accomplish wholeness in every way as the spirit gives us direction and utterance hallelujah we decree a thing and it's established it's not by own power or our, our own might but by your spirit hallelujah i thank you lord for the joy that was set before us we endure the cross of jesus because he did for us so that we can for you to accomplish all that you need for us to do in Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen.